Hey, Sun Devil fans, Brad Denny here bringing you another Speak of the Devil sit-down series where I bring you in-depth one-on-one conversations with key players, coaches, and other figures within Sun Devil Athletics. Now, there are many paths to success, but really, they all share a common trait, hard work. For Elijah O'Neill, that work ethic took him from the Pacific Northwest to junior college stardom to the Arizona desert. He began to make an impact for this Sun Devil defense as last season went on. And his work over this offseason led Kenny Dillingham to recently proclaim him the team's most improved player. Now that leap will be needed as he's entered this 2024 season in the starting lineup for a defense with big expectations. On this episode, Elijah and I discuss his football origin story, the lessons learned from his junior college years, the biggest hits of his career, and much more. So let's get to it. Here's my conversation with Elijah O'Neill. All right, Elijah, so you've played a lot of football over the years. Let's start off. Walk our listeners and viewers. What's the biggest hit you've ever delivered in a game? Ooh, the biggest hit I've ever delivered in the game is definitely in my JUCO season. My first season, I scored a touchdown. Um, I hit the quarterback, made him fumble, scooped it up, and scored. That was my only um touchdown that I had as a defensive player. I got defensive player of the game that game. And um, man, that's the most memorable hit that I've made was in my junior junior college season. It was great and it was an electric moment. So, How did your teammates and kind of the fans uh, react to that moment? Obviously such a big game ter- game changing play. Oh yeah, the fans were honestly like who is this kid? Who is this kid? You know, I, I just remember getting so much love after that game and um, so on after that game, um, man, it was always just love from the Butte College community. And um, after I made that play, I just knew, man, like I just got to more, make more and more plays of this, uh, like just like this one. You know what I'm saying? Especially me trying to get out of junior college. So I just knew I had to keep doing that um, every single game, making plays like that. And obviously, you've been making a lot of plays as of late recently. Kenny Dillingham uh, singled you out, said you're the most improved player on this team, making the the jump from last season. What did what did it feel to you know hear your head coach kind of you know really recognize the hard work you're putting in, and also kind of the tangible improvements in, on the field? Man, it feels really good. You know, it, feels, it always feels good to be recognized. Uh, um, I just feel like you know I've just been working really hard on and off the field. Um, such as just on and off off the field, such as rehabbing, um, prehabbing, because I'm, I'm not her, but prehabbing, staying on, staying on top of everything and just being a lot serious and being a pro at at um, at these things, um, just preventing injuries. You know what I'm saying? And then outside of it as well, just making sure I have everything clean and I'm organized, man. It just really starts from from the base up. And for me, that's a big thing. And then just on the field, um, just just being more more f- focused and locked in on what I need to do and how the coaches want it exactly. And and that's all about being bo- bro- uh, bought in to the system. You know what I'm saying? Just like Coach War says, doing your 111th. You know, a- everybody needs to be bought in to do that and and to come together collectively and and complete a, a mission, which is to win. Now that you have a, a year of uh, Power 4 football under your belt, you know, and you know, you know what major college football is all about, how do you feel better prepared this year? You mentioned kind of the, the prehabbing, the focus. You know, how, how uh, has your approach heading into this second season at this level differed to, you know, when you are first making that jump up? I mean, the speed's gotten a lot slower for me. You know, I, I've played more uh, at this level. Um, the speed's gotten slower and the game slowed down for me. Um, I, I, I just feel a lot more educated in the football scheme of things. It's just, um, I mean, I'm educated all around, but like more in the football, uh, you know, um, world. Uh, I just, it's just a lot of things that I didn't know back then um, that I know now. And I feel like that's all a part of Coach Reynolds. Man, he, he's just... He's just such a smart and savvy coach, and I just love to play um, play under him. And, um, man, he's developed me a lot as a player, and I can already tell that. So 
it's just for me was just really getting serious and and buckling down and and knowing what I have to do if if I'm trying to get to where I, I want to. So when you're just a few days away from the the start of this 2024 season, where do you think this team yeah. is right now, kind of collectively? You know, kind of com- maybe compared to the uh, the first game last year. This team is. I'm telling you, like we're gonna come out and and, and show a lot of the people what we're really about um, from last year to now. It's just I feel like the team chemistry is a lot better, and that's a big key factor into having a winning program and a winning team. You have to all come together collectively if you're trying to um, complete a goal and a mission, like I said. So, um, now I just I just love where we're at, and I and I love the people around me, and I want I want to do my job so everybody else can eat, and we can all get a win at the end of the day. Now, looking back to last year, uh, you know, what were you know some of the things that you thought you did well last year, and obviously when you kind of evaluate, what were some of the areas that you identified that you were kind of looking to improve over this off season? Um, so I'm going to start with what I need to improve. I need to improve my run game defense a lot. And this, this game is going to be a big test to that. You know what I'm saying? So that's uh, something that I, I knew I needed to work on. So, which means, you know, gaining more weight, eating more, being, um, being more smart about what I eat. And, um, I just feel like, that all comes into to play when playing Wyoming because they run a lot. It's a running team. So um, I knew that that was something that I needed to work on. And um, I've worked on it a lot and gotten and, – and I feel like I've gotten better at it. Um, and something that I feel like um, that, I, that I did good last year was my pass rush. You know what I'm saying? I, I love the pass rush. Um, game when we played UCLA, like that was my first sack with Deshaun Mallory. Um, you know, I just that that moment always pops up in my head, and I'm just ready to have more moments just like that moving forward into the season. Yeah, how special was that? You know, obviously getting in the backfield, taking the quarterback down, and doing so like in the Rose Bowl, one of the most iconic venues in, in the sport. Yeah, yeah, man, it was it was it's crazy, honestly. Like I was. It, it, it really was big to me. It was bigger to me because my my dad played in the Rose Bowl as well against UCLA when he played back uh, at Washington State. He played outside linebacker. And um, so it was just like I'm following the steps of my father. And, you know, I want to be better, but it was just a big moment too. And uh, um, and just like a moment of I I, I know I'm – I know what I, I say I am. You know what I'm saying? So – I, I just got to keep on um, keep on working and just keep doing me so I can have more moments like that. And you mentioned Deshaun Mallory a moment ago. You know, obviously, I, I believe you guys had a you guys had a pretty strong bond. And, you know, what was it like just working with him for for a year and kind of what kind of lasting impact did did his, uh, you know, did that year working with uh, Deshaun kind of have on you going forward? Yeah, Deshaun was me and him was his was buddies, man. We uh, he's just a big he was a big leader in, on the D line group. You know, everybody always looked after him, and he always set a good example to the young guys and the other guys in the group too. You know, um, he's well respected, and you know he's really got it out, got it out the dirt, and and I just respect him for that. Like like just making a team and and and. And doing good on that team too is just it is it's good to see guys that you worked with go a long way the way he did. So going through last year, obviously the wins weren't what anybody wanted, and obviously so much external stuff thrown at the program, uh, you know, kind of beyond the players and coaches' control. You know, going through you know a lot of those those uh, you know the, the adversity and just the, the hard times that the program had in 2023. What were some of the the, the, the big lessons you were able to take away from that? Um, I was able to take away um, winning is hard, you know, and you really have to prepare to win and and do everything that you possibly can um, if you want to be successful on Saturday, you know, and, and just right back to what I said, which means taking care of whatever you need to take care of that week. Um, just um, 
you know, beforehand preparing. You need to prepare a week a uh, week ahead. Just just making sure you you getting everything you need done. And I just feel like preparation is the key to to winning a lot of games and, and being successful. How much better do you think this 2024 group of Sun Devils is? You know, and having gone through the adversity and kind of forged in those fires of all the difficulties from last year. Yeah, I just feel like we were we we're, were way more serious than last year you know just going just practicing just it's way more intense it's way more intense. you can really see it i i, I just love the, the way that we're practicing harder and our workloads are showing it every day you know um we're out there we're working and it's less people complaining there was a lot a lot of complaining last year and i just feel like everybody's doing you know what i'm saying we're really working so and and that's that's um all dilly you know what i'm saying of him making a great environment a great team and um everybody just doing what they need to do so you know, we'll go, want to go st- start to the beginning you mentioned of course you, your dad played ball and you know had some good moments uh there for the cougs was he the conduit for you to get into the into playing football um man i just remember when i was young young and he would just always had um a football around me you know we would always play catch and so that's really how i really got into football you know i love playing catch with my dad and then from there it turned into flag football and then and then now i'm in pads in third grade so all the way from third grade to now i, I play ball other than the two years of my sophomore and junior year that i had to uh, take off a of high school ball but um i've been playing football since i was young so I, I I've loved this game. I have an extreme passion for this game. I love learning, and um, my dad is a big part of why I play this sport, though. And and I just love having him um, there for me whenever whenever I need something. You know, once you got to play in, in your competitive uh, leagues, you know, as as a kid, you know, what's some of the the earliest football memories that you can remember? Uh, you know, outside of you know tossing the ball around with your dad. Um, I play for the Newport Knights. Um, when I was young and I just always remember <laughs> when we were in hit lines and I would literally just be just be hitting kids and I I would just <laughs> feel bad. Yeah, I would just be trucking kids, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so as a young kid, I knew I had it in me, you know, but um, I, I do remember those moments, funny moments and just um, in, in Pee Wee football, just having so easy to score. You know what I'm saying? I'm the quarterback, and I'm hiking, and I'm just running to to get a touchdown. So, just moments like that. It's just they they were good moments in the back of my head. So obviously, you know, there's a lot of guys in, in that uh, locker room from Texas. You know, the Cali Devils. Uh, you know, obviously, the different hot spots around the country. What's the the Washington football scene like? Um, the Washington football is great, man. I'm telling you, we have a lot of man. Old day. Um, Eastside Catholic, those are really powerhouses of high school football in the state of Washington and Union High School. Um, we're going to get a lot more guys in from Washington. I feel like that's a state that needs to be recognized more for football because we're really slept on. I'm telling you, like Washington is slept on. Um, we have some ball players that come out, but um, hopefully we can be looking at Washington a lot more moving on, you know. When did you know that you know your ability in football could take you places? You know, possibly you know scholarship. Obviously, you're trucking kids as a you know as a quarterback. But you know, when did you know like, hey, like I can really go somewhere in this sport? Um, I knew that honestly. Uh, my my senior year of high school, you know, I had I had I was moving positions all around until um, until my senior year. I knew I wanted to play DN for sure. I was playing DN and tight end, so. Um, you know, I was, I was a versatile player, but uh, I knew I wanted to play DN and stick with Edge, you know. Um, I just remember playing Skyline High School. Uh, I played for Hazen High School, um, and I just remember playing Skyline High School and, and me getting my first sack at the end. It just, nothing, it felt way better than getting scoring touchdowns and the fact that I can just sack a quarterback He's on the ground, and I can get up and celebrate. It's just a, it's a, it's not not a better feeling than that. So I knew ever since then I wanted to stick stick to the end, and um, and I would succeed at that. 
or Elijah, obviously then coming off of high school and, you know, taking the junior college route, what was the kind of the path like there? You know, was there any kind of disappointment you weren't making the jump up to kind of, you know, uh, FBS level ball and, you know, having to go to the, through the junior college route? Yeah. Junior college. Um, I, I, I had to go through the junior college process it was because of, uh, you know, my grades coming out of high school. Uh, out of high school, I only had uh, one PWO offer uh, to Washington State. So I knew that um, I could do way better, you know, and, and just took that risk, bet it on myself, um, and took the junior college route. Um, I don't regret it at all because it's taught me so many different morals and um, – and just shaped who I am today. So um, going through that process, it was it was definitely a struggle from the start, you know, just having to um, fend for myself, you know, wasn't receiving any type of income and um, wasn't in state at that time because I, um, I was coming out of uh, Washington and to California, Butte College in Northern California. Um, but just that whole process was just really grinding and, and getting through the grittiness of the whole scheme of things. Um, at first, I, I was I was actually a two in junior college, um, and then my my second year was uh, my year. So that first year was rough for me, and then that that second year of me playing, um, I ended up getting fourteen point five sacks. So it was just you know, sticking to the process, you know, every time I go back to it, it's just sticking to the process and, and getting through what I needed to get through. So how, how much of adjustment was that for you? You know, you mentioned just yeah. going that route and, just, you know, having to go through that route, how did that kind of impact the work ethic that ultimately has led you to success at ASU? But, you know, yeah. in that time when you're in the middle of it and having to go that kind of unglamorous route uh, of junior college, you know, how do, have you seen kind of that work ethic develop then and kind of carry you forward? I mean, that worth ethic of me going through um, junior college, man, just made my worth ethic just very, very I just in detail. I just focused a lot in on detail, a scheme of things, and um, just working hard, like going through summer workouts, just like not having that give up mentality. Junior college gives you that dog mentality to where um, – you're not gonna be able to tap out when 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 um, the point the point to tap out. You know, you're not gonna be tapping out. Um, I just feel like it gives you that extra edge and that extra greediness, you know. So it, I definitely brought that part of junior college into power five um, power five ball playing for Arizona State, and I just feel like it's made me who I am today, and just gonna keep on. Um, Making, making, making play. And of course, you know when you when you did have that uh, that jump up in that, in that second year, Juco. I believe you had a five sack game. <laughs> what was it like just being in the zone like that, where you just must have been absolute tear, and the the, the other sideline must have just been there pulling their hair out trying to stop you. Oh my gosh, yeah, it was against San Francisco College. Um, it was a huge game for us because they were the number one team in the state. So I was just going to that game already juiced up, um, looking forward to proving a point. Harold Brooks, uh, D tackle on our team, he, he played for San Francisco City College, so he was there to see it live, and he was just telling me how how much of a terror I was, and um, you know that number nine, like that's the that's the number I wore in junior college. So man, it was just exciting, and and I knew right then and there, like I had what it takes to to um, play at the next level. And then, of course, you know, the, the, getting the validation of a, of a junior college All-American, you know, what did it feel like seeing kind of the culmination? You, know, you, you start off in the, in the junior college route and having to kind of you know, work your way up from there, and then ultimately, you know, obviously you, you position yourself with that 14-and-a-half sacks, five-sack game, junior college All-American. How, how good did that feel, and how validating was that for you? Oh, my gosh. It felt so good just having the name of being a – Junco All-American, you know, I always knew I could live up to it, and I've always had to roll the dice, you know, on myself and, and just bet on myself, like I said. Um, you know, when all odds were against me, I just kept pushing and um, just being resilient, you know. It's just it, your time's going to come when it comes, you know, and I just feel like just sticking to the process and letting things pan out 
is the best way to go through things. So when I when I did get all those awards and, and a player of the games and um, defensive MVP, it was just it was just a thank thank thanks to God, you know. You obviously have uh, very strong family ties, you know, to Washington State University, but ultimately chose yeah. to be a Sun Devil. Uh, how hard was that to, you know, maybe, you know, not be a Coug and follow in the, in the family footsteps? Uh, did you get a little grief from the family? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I mean, I went on a visit to Washington State at first, and it was cool and everything. Um, this is back when Coach Ward and um, Coach Cooper was at Washington State, and, and they, they switched over right in the middle of it, and he talked to Coach Dillingham when they were at Arizona State, and they ended up um, offering me. So I already had to build that relationship with that coach and staff and, and, and really loved how Coach Coop um, talked to me and came up to the facility when I was at Butte to talk to me. So it made me feel like I was important and um, someone that they needed um, in their scheme. So, you know, I already built that relationship, but it definitely was hard because my mom played track at Washington State, my older sister played soccer, and my dad played um, football at Washington State. So, you know, I was weighing out the options, but at the, at the end of the day, I had to choose what was best for me and go on my own route. What was it like, uh, you know, maybe the family trash talk heading into the, the game last year? And, of course, you know, you guys came out with the big, the, the big win over the Cougs. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't really trash talk because my dad, you know, he's always been there and just supported <laughs> me. So wherever I, I'm going, he's always going to support me, and I know that. And, you know, I'm just so proud to have somebody like that that um, will, is following me, and, and I know that will always have him in my back, you know. What was it like, just, you know, when you, first, when you get to, like, seeing the facilities of Arizona State and everything that has to offer, you know, after, you know, kind of coming up through the JUCOs? Yeah. Um, man, it was just – I was just in awe, you know, I was just coming out of junior college where we don't have a cold tub, we don't have a hot tub, you know, you have to get the hose and fill it, fill, fill up a bucket and throw some ice in there. So we, it was just like, just seeing, um, you know, the medicine, sports medicine room and then seeing the weight room and the locker room and then all the food that is, um, there for you to take whenever it, it I was just in awe and um, I already fell in love with the place I fell in love with Tempe as well as Phoenix you know I was like why not I'm in for the ride so so what advice would Elijah O'Neill today give Elijah O'Neill starting out at Butte I would say I would have to say just um, keep sticking to the process you know back then I was a lot in my head a lot and questioning myself a lot about am I really who I say I am? And I just feel like um, I went through a lot of adversity to get to where I am, you know? So it's just like sticking to the process and um, keep, keep keep your foot on that gas pedal. Just keep going every day. So when you're uh, not, you know, working the the very hectic schedule of a you know a student athlete and you know football player and all the things that are on your plate, you know, what are some of the interests that you have outside of football, and what are some of the goals that you have, you know, for life, you know, whenever you hang up the cleats, whenever that time comes? Yeah, I mean, I, I love fishing. You know, me and my dad were always fish as a kid, and as I got older and older, I just fished by myself. You know, I fish at Tempe Town Lake. Um, be catching catfish all the time so that's a definitely a hobby that i love to do and i feel like i want to do something along those lines with maybe a charter or anything like that you know get in a boat and or, or um be just being an owner of a charter company um of some sort and um you know coaching too i could see myself coaching and just giving back to the game giving back to the kids I love getting back to the kids and being around kids. So um, I could definitely see myself being being a coach in the future. But um, there's a lot that I can do, um, you know. Um, but I'm just focused on one thing right now. One priority is tr uh, trying to get to the NFL. So um, just need to have a good season to make that happen. But 
obviously off to a very, very good start uh, you know, on this 2024 season. You guys have the, the big dominating win. Uh, you hold the Cowboys to 118 yards uh, of total offense, and you yourself – Big part of that, you know, with a, with a big sack, your your first full sack, and we talked about earlier in, in the episode about you know getting that half sack in, in the Rose Bowl. What, what was yeah. that? What was last Saturday night like? Just you know having you know obviously the personal success with the big sack, but just having such a dominating team defensive effort. Yeah, I just when we go when we went into the game, I, I already knew we, we were going to come out and dominate. You know, my boy Jacob D tackle Kangaika man, he. It's turning everybody up. He always brings electrifying energy to everybody and just just getting everybody juice, especially on the D line. You know, we, we knew as a unit what we had to go out there and do and we went out there and executed and did what Coach Ward said and, and we did our one eleventh and it ended up coming out uh with a victory. Um it just felt it felt so good to get, get that sack, you know. Um just brushing all, all the cobwebs off, you know, and, and um, knowing what we have to do now going into the Mississippi State game. Um, I just feel like we know who we are as a team now, and we just got to continue to um, come back each week with that win mentality and be able to reset from a victory into this next, next week, next week, you know. You also made me look pretty good in, in the press box before the game. Somebody said, uh, asked me like who I thought would get the first sack of the year, and I said, I said you. So thank you. Oh, you <laughs> that, that came that came to fruition. So maybe <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> uh, so you know, obviously, you know, as this defense comes together, and you know, you are a veteran. You know, you've you've yeah. played a number of years at the college level, have the time at JUCO that really kind of shaped your focus. Do you see yourself taking on kind of more of a leadership role now? Uh, you know, in, in that uh, D line room. Yeah, so Yeah, definitely. I see myself become more of a leader, you know, and just following as a, as an example. You know, I always try to go first and, and, and everything I do just to make sure everybody knows exactly um, how to be able to execute what's been asked by Coach Reynolds in a group and um, and just, just trying to be there for the younger guys to make sure they know what they're doing when their time, uh, when their number's called. You know, when they have to go out there and it's really game time. And um, so I just want everybody to be on the same page and just know that we're all a family and, you know, we're all a, a unit, a close unit. I spoke to Coach Ward recently and he said one of the biggest differences and the, heading into this year is that, you know, the, the among the returning guys like yourself that – they kind of not understand the why of the defense as opposed to kind yeah. of just, you know, what they're doing and what the assignment on any given call is. Uh, how how impactful is that knowing the why of why you guys are doing this in defense and how you think that has helped elevate the defense's performance? I think it's helped elevate the defense um, by just knowing everybody needs to do their job to be able to execute. Um, if one person shows dysfunction in the whole 11, then – everything's messed up everybody everybody just knows what each other has to do um to be able to be successful and i feel like just everybody's bought in last year i feel like people honestly just weren't as bought in as we are this year so that's definitely the difference you just need to have a whole team of 11 out there that is bought in and um trusting in what coach gord is saying you know um and as long as we do that, we'll be just fine. Of course, uh, Deron Reynolds is a guy who comes in with a pretty pretty impressive pedigree in terms of developing pass rushers. He recently just put one in the Hall of Fame. Um, you know, what has his impact been on you so far? Oh yeah, Coach Reynolds. I mean, he's a really good guy, man. I just feel like from last year to this year, it's a big difference for me. Um, and just you know, coaching wise, um, I just feel like. I'm a lot more closer to Coach Reynolds, you know, and just more have more of a bond with Coach Reynolds. And, um, you know, he I look after him as just like a uh, a role model. You know, I, I want to, um, like, how he treats his kids. You know, he's a, he's a good father. I see his kid at the at the game recently, you know, went up and, and dapped his son up and just, like, like he has a really cool family too, you know. Um, I just feel like Coach Reynolds is developed me as a as a player 
tremendously. You know, I said back in a, a different interview how I uh, go on the take from last year till now, and I just feel like I'm a way better pass rusher, and, and that's due to him. That's all due to him. And, um, you know, just the work that I put in and just trusting Coach Reynolds. Um, I just trust him as a coach, and he has a bunch of years of experience under his belt. So I know he has what it takes um, to get me to where I want and to get me to the level that I want to um, see myself at. You're obviously off to a very good start this year, but you know, ultimately throughout the course of this 2024 season, what do you want to show folks uh, out there on the field with your play? Um, I just want to show folks that, you know, I'm, I can be an elite pass rusher um, by the end of it. Um, I have a big goal for myself. So I don't really want to do and not talk about it. You know, a lot of people talk about what they're going to do and it doesn't end up happening. So I just really want to go out there and um, be the person that comes out of nowhere, you know, the person that a lot of people don't talk about as much. And I just um, show that somebody that is under the radar can can do big things, you know, to all the people that are under the radar and feel like they're not seen or, or heard about, that they, they can get through adversity and, and be successful. You know, and... and- through the through the course of your play, you know, what do you hope Sunderville fans get to know about you and you know the the number fifteen that they're cheering for uh, this season? Um, I just, man, I just, I hope I hope everybody that that is watching this is able to. Um, I just want to meet meet as many fans. You know, the fans is what it's this what it's all about. You know, ASU um, culture is just amazing. You know, all the fans are amazing. It's just. It's crazy. We keep running down on kickoff and then um, hyping the crowd up and, and them and hearing all of ASU just um, cheering. You know, it, it's it's a different feeling and it's a feeling that um, there's not many feelings like that. So I just want to connect with the ASU community and just um, be able to be someone that is more in the community and somebody that everybody can talk to, you know. And this is obviously going to you know be heading into your final season of college ball. When all is said and done in twenty twenty four, what would make it a successful year when you look back upon it? Um, nine to ten sacks. You know that's my goal to this year to set me up um, for success in the future. You know that's my goal. Eight, eight, nine, ten sacks is is the best man. Anything at anything above is. Is, is amazing, obviously, but that's my, my ultimate goal and just making, um, being able to just do everything that I, I wanted to accomplish. Um, that, that's definitely all I can ask for. I'd like to thank Elijah for taking the time to talk with me for this episode. Make sure you are subscribed to Speak of the Devils on the podcast platform of your choice for more great sit down series episodes featuring a number of Sun Devil players and coaches as well as the flagship show, which is going to bring you in-depth coverage all 2024 season long. And make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at bdenny29.